I have been careless. Terribly so. Opening my eyes slowly, I felt my vision adjusting as quickly as it could while I stared at the filthy, dusty floor that was decorated with flecks of my blood. Scuff marks from shoes and discarded bits of my belongings were haphazardly strewn across the ground by my feet. They were close enough that, had I the energy, I could have easily towed the items with the tips of my sneakers and been none the wiser. Throat parched from lack of water, a rasping cough escaped from my mouth, causing a burning sensation to tear through the back of my throat to the point that I could almost taste the bile and blood attempting to rise up from my esophagus. A mirthless grin touched the corners of my cracked and dried lips. It was sad, really. Even if I wanted to ease the chap state that they were in, there wasn't enough moisture in my body to even create the necessary amount of spit that was needed to do so. A bitter chuckle rattled against my chest, causing a horrible <coughs> coughing fit to ensue. <coughs> Leaning forward, I felt the shackles tearing into my flesh at my wrists, while the chains jangled in response to the hold they had on me. No matter how much I pulled, the restraints were holding me securely against the brick wall at my back. I only succeeded in stirring up more dust to flow around me, bits of the brick gathering at my feet. You are a fool. The loud drumming of my own heartbeat reverberated in my ears. No. I blinked, eyes dried out, and yet I was unable to form tears to ease their pain. I am alive. But you wish you were dead, don't you? The sound was similar to a gong ringing in my ears this time. A mixture of my own heartbeat and the sound of a warning bell tearing through my mind. It repeated itself over and over again as the dark voice of question began to laugh bitterly inside of my mind. He had always been amused with my struggles, my need to survive and continue on my journey of life. The entity within me had often wondered why I clung so desperately to my will to live, but it was nothing that I found annoying or overly disconcerting. A heavy, rasping breath came from deep within my gut my dirty hair clinging to my forehead from sweat that refused to trail down along my dirty skin. The only sound aside from my voice was the whirring rotary fan that sat atop a rickety old wooden table situated a few feet away from me. Next to the fan was a single walkie-talkie that, on occasion, came to life with its weak blip noise and the voice on the other end would ascertain whether or not I was still alive. At some point, it had come off as a sick joke to answer that only the dead were down there, but it lost its amusement about the fifth time around. I am alive. But the same could not be said for the bodies lingering the floor of my underground prison. One of my captor's head was completely missing. The blood coagulated around the spine that protruded out from the hunk of meat that remained of his neck. Just around the male's shoulders were hunks of what could only be perceived as crystal or ice. Though the body had only been there for a day, it was already starting to decompose thanks to the stifling heat of the basement. There was little to no moisture in the air, and I may as well have been thrown out in the desert at this rate. As I looked up and to the right, another of my captors was pinned up against the wall just as I was or it would have been more accurate to say that he had been impaled into the wall. A long, spear-like object was buried deep within his abdomen, the material translucent like glass. Blood was caked along the glass spear, but none had dripped onto the ground as it normally would have. Where a puddle of blood should have been were merely small droplets of what was assumed to have been sweat from the victim's body. His feet dangled above the ground, shoulders curled forward as his arms drooped down, resembling a puppet whose strings had been cut. There were other bodies in the room, all similar in their states of death. A few limbs blown off here, a body severed in half there. 
One only had a head to speak of while his body was an obliterated mess scattered throughout the musky, dimly lit prison that had now been my home for the past day and a half. My captors finally got enough brains to realize that the most efficient way to get me to talk after almost 48 hours was to keep their men as far away from me as possible, starve me, and to make sure that the room was dry and cool enough so that there was constant heat but not enough to make a person sweat. Soft pounding began at the back of my head, as if to warn me of the impending migraine that was soon to come. You should rest, Kian. It's been a long day. No sooner had the voice conveyed such soft words of concern did the heaviness of sleep begin to weigh down on the backs of my eyelids. I hadn't realized it until that moment, but the overwhelming stench, lack of hydration, and lack of sleep was starting to eat away at me. Even holding myself up like this was a task in and of itself. Yes, sleep. You have endured much for my sake, Kian. My cracked lips spread into a dejected smirk, causing a tear to rip just below the cleft of my lip. Yet even with the torn skin, blood did not flow. I have done nothing for your sake. Another cough escaped my lungs, my gag reflex in play but releasing no fluids from my bowels. But you, you have killed to fulfill your own desires. A warped bout of laughter tore through my mind, the sound of the gong bursting forth with such intensity that it seemed like a bolt of lightning had seared my very brain. Your desire to live is the same as mine. The darkness was creeping around the corners of my eyes, my vision blurring once more as I soon realized that it would truly only be a matter of time before he took control of my body once more. The fizzle and crack that came from the walkie-talkie was the last thing that I heard before I blacked out completely. <laughs> It was aggravating, to say the least. Frankly, it just outright pissed me off. How in the hell had I allowed the brat to get this far and without my interference before now? It was insane, really, just how ridiculous the current situation was. Despite all of my poking and prodding, my partner refused to acknowledge my influence except for utmost survival. Other than that, the young man really made his presence known and dominated whenever necessary. Had it really come down to that now? For utmost survival? I felt put out by such a thing. I scoffed, my eyes glaring off in various directions to get a better feel for the room once more. It was all so drab and I was disinterested, but would it curb my boredom in later minutes and seconds? I wasn't so sure, to be quite honest. I pulled at my bindings, the chains rattling with resistance as the slightly rusted cuffs of my shackles dug into my skin. While I was fully aware of the pain, it did little to affect me. My dry tongue made an attempt to give adequate moisture to my horribly dry lips, but that was pointless. My eyes narrowed harshly at my bindings as I attempted to piece together an appropriate plan for our escape. Have you decided to give up yet? You won't go another day without water in that hot box. I won't need another day, I said flatly. I turned my head, listening to the voice grunting with displeasure from the walkie-talkie. Whoever that guy was, he was starting to piss me off. Just give me ten minutes and I'll come up there and drink the blood straight from your eye sockets before skull-fucking the shit out of you. What the fuck did you just say?! Oh, I'm sorry. Did I not make myself clear enough for you? My arms grew taut as the muscles pulsed with power, digging into my flesh and ripping through my skin. The soft pitter-patter of blood falling to the floor caused the lips that belonged to my host to smirk, another tear successfully revealing itself on my bottom lip this time. Again, I twisted my hands against my restraints, pulling and yanking the chains upwards and downwards as more blood began to fall from the wounds growing in size along my wrists. I am going to murder your fucking faces 
and skull fuck every single one of your corpses. You shit kicking motherfuckers. Maniacal laughter exploded from deep within my lungs as I lifted my head toward the ceiling. Rushed footsteps and the clacking of rifles could be heard from the walkie-talkie, but they would not be able to kill me no matter how much they wanted to. No matter how many magazines they emptied and no matter how many threats against my life, or my host forbid, his manhood, my victory had been guaranteed. It had been decided the very moment that my own blood slid down into the palms of my hands as my fingers curled into the thick, coppery-smelling liquid that flowed through my veins. When the pads of my fingers had been coated into a decent amount of blood, I smeared what I could along the rough metal of my shackles and my darkness took control, freezing the red liquid instantly, and in a flash my bindings exploded from the sheer pressure of the liquid constricting along the metal. Heavy booted feet thundered down the steps as I smeared more blood along my other restraint, causing it to freeze and explode. Before my first captor could make it down the steps good, I was racing forward to swipe up the canteen of one of my earlier victims, quenching my thirst and then pouring the water over my body. A gunshot exploded in the room just as my body was freezing the water from head to toe, causing the bullet to bounce off my person and ricocheted off a nearby wall and hitting one of my enemies in the leg, who was following closely behind the first. Seconds ticked by and I curled my shoulders forward, a surge of power rippling throughout my form as spikes of ice covered me completely in the hundreds of various shapes and sizes. And the last thing that they ever saw was the cruel smirk etched on my lips before a hailstorm of ice lances and needles spiraled and rained down upon them. I rolled my neck, the sound of my bones popping echoing softly in my ears as I glared at the vermin on the dirt at my feet. Several were bleeding from the mouth and nose, others were frozen solid, and one remained rolling around in pain. My lip trickled a trail of blood, and a nice cut was just below my left eye. My dirty hair no longer slicked back as it had been a few seconds ago, but all around my face to where I could barely see anything. Not that I needed to. Spitting at the ground, I slowly wiped a thumb across my lip, smearing the trail across my chin as the last remaining of the disgusting roaches I'd beaten to death and into the ground rolled onto his back to look up at me. My victim's glare nowhere near matching my own, but the attempt amused me. You lousy son of a bitch. I pushed back a smirk as I cracked my knuckles, water dripping from my bangs due to the ice that had melted thanks to my own grip growing lax on the ions and the water itself. Think you'll get away with this? I scoffed, my hair falling across one of my eyes as I narrowed the other. Oh, I don't think. I said, stepping toward the guy and then raising my hand up in the air where water dripped from my fingertips. I know. Curling my fingers into my palm and with a thrust of my fist, I smashed my knuckles into the human's jaw and watched as the water began to mix and fuse with his blood, his body crystallizing from the liquid that was freezing his entire form. Just before the human's lips were completely frozen, he moved them once more. Who the hell are you? What are you? I spit again, reached into the bastard's back pocket for his smokes and popped one into my mouth before lighting me in quickly. I grinned, raising my foot in the air as the man blinked his eyes one last time, the fear clear in their dark depths. Oh God. Letting the smoke exhale out of my nostrils, I slammed the heel of my sneaker into the man's head crushing it underfoot as chunks of ice and meat exploded in different directions. Sighing, I let the smoke leave my nose and I slipped my hands into my pockets as I stared out the window across the ways on the other side of the room, into the evening sun. It was setting slowly across the horizon, behind the tall buildings and the dark silhouettes of what I had at first assumed to be trees, but soon realized were merely power lines. What a beautiful, blood-red sky. I sighed once more, a look of pleasure spreading across my features as I made my way toward the stairwell of the concrete bunker I was in. <sighs> so beautiful. 
My eyes fluttered open and I suddenly realized that I was walking once more, the sound of my feet shuffling through the sand reaching my ears. It was unbelievable to think that my own body had been moving without my mind. AGAIN! Apparently I had needed more rest than my body actually did. A small smile formed on my slightly wet lips as my head bobbed up and down with my steady pace along the golden wilderness. I felt my body rising and knew that I was going up an incline. As I reached this new area, I turned to look in every direction I could. The land was almost completely barren, but there was a riverbed beneath the crag I stood on and a small village several clicks heading off where I assumed to be the northwest. Power lines and wind turbines were scattered here and there, and not a glimmer of game life revealed itself in any way. Was it really so late in the evening? My stomach groaned in protest as the thought of food struck my mind, reminding me that I hadn't eaten or had a thing to drink in nearly two days. Or had it been over 48 hours at this point? Yet, my lips were at least moist now. How had that happened? Just my luck, I thought, eyes narrowing in annoyance as I continued climbing up the ledge I was currently on. All this walking and I still don't see jack shit! My feet sunk into the barren land and with each step I took, the weight of my past grew heavy on my heart. What had forced me to even make that sort of deal all those years ago anyway? For what reason had I shook hands with this... thing inside of me? I couldn't even remember anymore and so I couldn't decide if it had been worth it or not. Was anything worth having to constantly wake up, smelling of blood and death like this? Hungry, fatigued, and heartbroken, I didn't even know if I had the willpower to continue along on my journey. Things were harsh enough that I didn't think living was even worth the effort anymore. So much bad luck had fallen upon me. Sure, life had been hard and I never had a place long enough to call my own, but living should have been enough. Knowing I was still me should have been enough. Right? Suddenly, I collapsed onto the ground, a spray of sand flying in the air as my own body sank into the softness of the warm golden blanket. My stomach groaned again to not being fed and my legs were numb from the endless walking I had done. Even my body was refusing to cooperate with me due to the days of torture and not being fed or getting any sleep but my mind was wide awake with all the terrible memories that tore up my brain and heart. I attempted to lift my arm, but it simply trembled in response and then remained still, unmoving. Relenting, I let my head fall as the rest of my body meshed into the soft sand that was cooling from the evening air and rolled onto my side. I could feel the sting of my injuries increasing from the grains of sand entering my skin, but I didn't care. I knew I would have to sustain my hunger until I could find food. Desperate, I pulled out the silk handkerchief from my pocket and placed it into my mouth. I began to chew, causing my mouth to water in response as I indulged in satisfying my own thirst with my own spit. My eyes slowly shut as I began to swallow bits of fabric and saliva, the warm liquid traveling down my throat as the sticky wetness attempted to catch in my mouth. I didn't care, for it was my only way to ignore the hunger pangs and a means to chase his laughter away. I could no longer feel the water sliding down my throat as sleep slowly took a hold of me. I could not fight it anymore. He would take over and maintain control again while I had a moment to rest. I had no way of knowing what acts of cruelty would ensue in his wake. But I didn't have the strength to give enough concern as I knew I should. But at least one thing was certain. I am alive.